Hi, in this video we'll, we will go through some of the basic functionality of the debug viewer uh, from the perspective that how can we capture the trace logs on the production server when we are on the client side when there is some issue um, that we want to narrow down. Um, there are certain issues that happen in the production environment only. These kind of issues are hard to reproduce on the test or development servers. So if, if there is an issue on the client side, for example, the system becomes unresponsive for some reasons or there is a crash or there are some deadlocks happening on the database side. Um, so the best way is to uh, get information on that environment, what's happening on that server at that particular time when the issue um, happens or starts uh, happening. And there could be a number of reasons for these kind of issues. Usually they're related to stress, um, database uh, deadlocks, or some resource become unavailable, some network issues, or any third party issue that um, that software um, is integrated or is dealing with. But to narrow down, exactly what is happening we need the traces we need all the logs and uh, the most common tool that we use is the debug viewer uh, all our software they send traces to the debug viewer so whoever is starting the debug viewer on the production server should start it as an admin run it as an administrator and uh, once um, you start it please make sure that all these captures are enabled and over here you can start and stop the log once you start the capture it will um, keep receiving all those messages sent by all the modules or services or the application running on that particular server please please make sure that this format of the time is exactly as shown here it offers uh, like this and like this uh, why we need the time format exact in this format is because most of the time we have to link these messages to windows event logs or some other module logs so we want to see oh something happened over here what happened is there any issue at the same time in this module or any issue reported in the windows log during this time so that's why this time um, format is important so please make sure that you choose the right format so you see it's once we run the application the logs are being captured but there is an issue with this uh, default option the issue is that as we start the capture for example let me clear and let me start it again so as we start the messages the message ID start from zero and it continue to grow by default all these messages that are being captured they are held into the memory and they will be captured and they will be held into memory as long as this application is running but as we are talking about the ghost issues which we don't know when they are going to occur but we want to capture their logs and traces so what we have to do we have to run this debug viewer and leave it and watch the server until the issue occurs and most of the cases it takes hours it takes days for these kind of issues to occur and with this default option like you start this debug viewer it starts capturing these logs we cannot leave it running for many hours or for many many days on the production server because all these messages that are captured they stay in the memory and if you run the debug for a longer time it will start taking up a lot of memory on that server and eventually the server will become slow not because of the issue because of this debug view and might crash or might hang because the debug view will eat up all the memory so we need to see what are the best options to run this debug viewer in a way that it is not eating up the resources or making the server slow, production server slow, but also we ensure that the debug log is captured. So the first option we should go is in here, options, history depth. So we go here, we specify the history depth. By default, it's zero. That means unlimited. What we can specify, we can specify 10,000 or 100,000 messages. So that means it will only retain the more or the latest hundred or thousand or ten thousand whatever the limit is specified in its memory 
as uh, it reaches its limit it will uh, keep removing the old messages as it is capturing the new messages so it the memory will not increase will not go beyond that certain limit if we specify the limit of 10000 i think the process goes up to 4 5 mb memory and if we specify 100000 it might go to 30 40 50 mb memory which is uh, nothing on the production server so we must specify this history depth and uh, let me show you if i specify say 40 and let me start the capture so see at any given point there are only 40 latest messages the old messages are gone you can see the ids being overwritten and the counter is increased so at any given time and only those messages are kept according to the limit that is specified and when we are done with this capture we stop this log save it into a log file and send it to whoever is responsible for the further analysis so using this history depth history depth we can control and ensure that this debug viewer um, doesn't eat up all the memory or resources on the server but this isn't good uh, especially there are issues you know when we uh, we want to track it or we want to see the activities uh, even before the issue has happened we want to know okay what ha happened 20, 10 minutes ago what happened 20 minutes ago okay this activity happened then this activity happens because we want to build up the scenario what was going on in the server we want to see the whole context so if we have specified a limit like 10,000, there is a chance that we want uh, to go one hour back or two hours back and that log is already overwritten. So that's the issue with this approach. And other issue is, imagine that the, the, the issue did happen. We did capture the log in the debug viewer. But when the issue happened, the production server went unresponsive and nobody is able to go and uh, you know perform this save as so that means we did capture the log but unfortunately because the production server is not responsive we cannot um, capture the log into a file and that cannot be sent to somebody who want to perform the analysis on that log so that means we need to look something else as well and the other option is in conjunction with this limit that I already mentioned, the history depth limit, we can use this option. Over here, we can specify that whatever log is captured should be saved into a log as well in parallel. The, it, it, it will be shown in the UE as well, but in parallel, it will be saved into a file as well. The default option is saved to this file. You can choose a directory and a file. And the default option is unlimited. Obviously, we wouldn't like to go for this option because um, if uh, the debug viewer keeps running for a number of days, it will uh, the file size will grow and grow, and that might cause some issue. So one of the option is that we choose to have one file every day. This is quite nice. For example, if we want to run the debug viewer for more than one day, we choose this option and we say OK. And then if we start the capture, we should see a file with today's date. And if we open this file, we should see the messages being captured in here. Okay, So we can see the messages in here. And now when the date changes, the system should start a new file with the a different name according to the new date so now we should see a file with 12 so it has now started capturing the log into this file if I change the date again we should see another file with the 13th of uh, November so this is good uh, but if we want to see we can look at the other options as well the other options uh, I have to close this debug view and rerun it. So the other option, if we want to say we have some uh, disk space issue and we want we don't want to, you know to have many log files on the server, we can specify that yes, uh, you write all these logs into this log file 
and your maximum limit is 100 MB, 10 MB or 1 MB and when that re uh, limit reaches, for example, if I, if I specify these settings, what it will do, it will start capturing the logs into this file until the file size is below 100 MB. It will keep adding log messages to this file. But once the file size reaches to this limit, it will stop writing the further logs into this log messages. Uh, but if I check this wrap over here, what it will do, once the size file size reaches its limit, it will start from the oldest messages and then the new messages will be overwritten according to the oldest. So that's going to happen. If I press the append, it will uh, keep appending the file. Uh, so the file size will grow in this case if we check the append option. So if we have some hard disk space limitation, then we should use this option. We specify the maximum size of the file that we want to capture and press the wrap option. In this case, we'll show that at least 100 or 10 or 1000 MBs data or the log is there. So these are the two options that we should use on the production server when we, when we want to capture the logs for the issues that we don't know when are they going to occur. For example, the customer says, oh, the issue occurs randomly sometimes on the weekend when they're not there. So nobody's there on the production server to see. So in this case, we just run this debugger with these two options, the history depth and the log to a file either every day or with this limit and then leave this debug view running. This, with this option we are sure that this debug view won't cause any issue. The history depth will ensure that the process, Windows process will not take more than a certain memory on the operating system and with this option we know the log is safe into a certain folder even if the system crashes or even if at a certain time there is a situation that nobody is able to access uh, or log on onto the server the files the log files that we have captured so far will be there in a certain folder and we can copy those log files and somebody can perform the analysis on those log files